Hi, my name is Darcy Ott, and today I have decided to interview Becky Benefield. She is our school support TOSA um, at the school that I work at, and she does a lot with behaviors and behavior management, so I thought she would be a great person to interview for this project. So thank you, Becky, for taking the time to allow me to interview you today. Um, why don't we start and you can tell me a little bit about your background. Okay. Um, so I've always worked with children. I, I used to work, work as a camp counselor and an after school care. Um, and so in college, I realized that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, so I changed my major, went through, you know, got my teaching credential. And then I was lucky to get a job at an amazing school here in Irvine. Um, where I taught first grade for quite some time. Um, I looked into administration at some point too and realized I needed some better, I needed more experience also in an upper grade. So I taught fourth grade for a few years mm -hmm. before going back down to first grade again. Um, then I started to look into just, I didn't necessarily want to be an administrator at the time, but was just looking at different leadership type of opportunities. Um, so I did a lot of um, district committees. Um, I was uh, Part of the PBIS, the Positive Behavior Incentives, um, that team. So I, I learned a lot about behavior mm -hmm. then, um, and then that kind of transitioned me into different TOSA jobs, teacher on special assignment. So I did some intervention, um, and now I'm here with the school support, which is kind of like the assistant principal. Very nice. Yeah. Um, well, tell me, what is your experience of um, working with students that have challenging behaviors, both in the classroom and, I guess if you want to touch on like an administrative role too. Yes, perfect. Yeah, so in the classroom, I feel like, you know, there's always at least one challenging behavior um, every year, and it varied and it looked different every year. Um, but as a teacher, you know, I, and I had to treat all of those really individually, because there wasn't just like one step thing you could do to, to work on the behavior. Um, so I have a lot of experience of just trying to do different things in the classroom in both first and fourth grade. Um, and then now, kind of from an administrative role, I do deal with um, a lot of behavior. Um, usually when it's past the classroom, the teacher can't get a hold of it and needs additional help, then um, I get to, to see it now, um, which is usually a little bit more severe than what maybe I was dealing with on a regular basis in the classroom. Okay. Um, could you tell me a little bit about a time um, when you were in the classroom as a teacher that you had a student that had a challenging behavior and you had to kind of deal with that, you know, kind of starting from when it was recognized and like what processes you went through? Yes, um, and that one's actually easy. There's one that comes to mind right away because it was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was many years ago. I was teaching first grade. Um, I was actually in a job share, so there were two teachers and normally it was just one, you know, we were each there on different days, but on the first day of school we were both there and I'm so glad because we go out to meet our little first graders in the line, their parents are all with them. You know, we talk to all their parents, how are you getting home today? Um, everything seemed great, we came inside and one student completely tore up the classroom. He oh took all the things off the walls. He dumped over desks and you know, it was at that time where I'm like, I'm so glad there's two of us because had it just been one of us and all, and then we have a class of first graders who are nervous and <laughs> not sure what's going on yeah. anyways without this. Um, so that child comes to mind uh, because the behavior was was always kind of a challenge and we did need to, uh, we had to put in a lot of both inter interventions, modifications, um, and eventually it actually led to a different placement. <laughs> so when this child came into your classroom, did you have any information like leading up to it that this child could possibly be on your radar as no. far as challenging behavior? No. None at all. Oh, wow. I had, okay. had no clue and the child was actually a twin. I just We just had this one. The twin was in another class. They had moved from out of state. Um, it does appear later on we found because we quickly researched and looked yeah. into this. Um, there was like an IEP but it was out of date. It wasn't a current IEP um, but we didn't get even word of that until several weeks later. Oh wow. Um, we talked to the parents at drop off, you know, they hugged them, said had a great day. <laughs> so there was no sign right. that there, okay. was, there was no sign that, that was coming. It was yeah. it was the su surprise, surprise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell me about what your steps were um, because you said that he did have an IEP in the past but it wasn't active. So what were your right. steps in order to get him to the point of 
transitioning him to a separate classroom that was, you know, better fit for him. Right. What did you have to do? So we started, I mean, we started with just making a behavior plan just within the classroom. Okay. Um, and what did that look like? Was it a chart? It or? was a chart. Okay. It was a very simple, you know, it's first day of first grade, first week of first grade. So it was a sticker chart and mm -hmm. we had set specific goals based on what we saw. And that worked a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> usually it works a little bit better, but you know, from how he reacted, it was easy for our school to see that he did require help. So we were okay. lucky to have a lot of our special ed teacher come in and help as uh, other resources too, um, because he did need to be taken out of the classroom. Um, like we said, we looked for his IEP. We didn't get it for weeks, and it was incomplete and mm -hmm. out of date. So it, it wasn't that helpful. So we kind of had to start fresh. With that okay and um, so it required a lot of testing okay and then the testing was hard because he was a behavior and couldn't sit through the testing mm -hmm. so the the testing took a lot longer than we had hoped for okay now you're the one that per did the testing with the student or was this done by like the school psychologist or sped team right so it was um i did just like my classroom like baseline tests okay. um for more academic academic was not there yeah. <laughs> <I'm concerned. laughs> Um, Not surprising. Yeah, he was fine there, okay. but it was um, so the school psychologist did a lot of tests as well as our special ed team. Okay, and then once you guys collected all this information, what were the next steps? Um, so then once we did our testing, we could see that you know, and with observations that this was not the best fit. Mm -hmm. um, so we did write an IEP, an individualized education plan. Um, so it was a new and updated one. And, and parents were definitely on board. I think they were kind of lost. They wanted help for this. So they were definitely excited to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and in our plan, we did recommend um, a school that was very close, um, but it had a program just for behaviors. Okay. Um, so he, but the whole process from starting school until, until the time he went was about four months. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's a lot of time. So during that time, did you just continue on with the behavior chart or so we, we did, did modified different days? behaviors. He had modified days mm -hmm. and he had a lot of time outside the classroom with specialists. Yeah. Um, we could kind of see when he was going to explode. And so we, we, could, we were always really looking for that. Um, so we had kind of called for help and have them yeah. taken out. I mean, there were a lot of times where we did have to evacuate the classroom just for oh, the wow. safety for the kid. Um, those kids got a lot of outside time. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily yeah. they just, you know, we kind of just made it seem like that was part of our routine. We're going to go outside for a nature Absolutely. walk. Or, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because the most important thing is making sure that the rest of the class is safe and, yes. and nobody gets harmed, even including the child that has the behavior. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, um, did you feel like you were supported during this time of, you know, with this child? Like, did you feel like you had support from administration and from special ed? And yes, I feel very supported, and I'm so I'm so glad we were supported because it would have been so hard to not have that support. Yeah. So, you know, to be able to have somebody can kind of remove him from the room when needed, or someone there, like when he was going to explode, like that. Our special ed team did such a fabulous job of supporting theirs. And that's, and that's hard because they have their own caseload and they can't always be there. So I feel lucky that yeah. they were really supportive. Our administrator was great. Um, I mean, this, like I said, this was the most severe behavior yeah. I've seen in my career of, you know, 22 years. So um, they, you know, were good about moving things along pretty quickly and communicating with parents. Okay. And now, since you are an administrator now, do you have any experience or anything you want to talk about as far as the behaviors and kind of give me your perspective, like from an administrator's perspective? Because now this, you know, behaviors have moved it beyond the classroom and then you're taking on right. a different role. Yes. So do you have any examples of that? Yeah. Um, and I can even kind of talk about like the approach from an administrator that mm -hmm. is, is different. I do feel like as an administrator, you know, I hadn't been the one dealing necessarily with the behavior day in and day out. Like right. usually by the time they get up here to the office, like the teacher is exhausted a lot of different possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's nice because I have like a more refreshed look on it because I'm not worn down from right. it. Um, so I try to do everything uh, as restorative as possible. Um, kind of talk about, you know, usually I talk a lot about like trust um, can talk about that in most things. Like I can't, I can't trust you to go outside and play and not hurt my my friends out there. Mm -hmm. Like I can't trust you 
on the computer to make safe choices that are going to be good for your education and help you learn. Um, and then with that, I try to make the consequence like very relatable to what the you know what the, the crime was, right. right? So if someone's you know not playing safe on the soccer field, then maybe we're not playing soccer for a little bit. Okay. Um, but my hope is here that you know they can like I, I don't yell. Um, and that we can kind of like look at a big picture and make a plan and coach them through it to, to make better choices. Yeah. But it is different from being in the classroom because the Definitely. classroom it was like, okay, I'm trying this, I'm trying this, I'm trying this. And often now too, I will coach teachers like, well, have you tried this? Or have you tried this? Because there are so many different things that you can do for behavior and each kid is different. And it's just about finding what works for that kid. Definitely. No, you and I spoke too about um, you know you working with the teachers um, during what's like PLC time. Yes. And you guys talk a lot about situations in the classroom. Right. So, what kind of supports do you offer teachers in that regard? Yeah. Um, so, I think something that's great that our school is doing really well and our district's really focusing on is you know we do have our professional learning communities, our PLC, where we meet once a week. Um, but we're not just talking about academics. We're yeah. talking as a group too for support for SEL, you know, emotional and for behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice to be able to meet with the team and get other people's ideas. You know, and I love meeting with the team because I'm like, oh, I haven't thought of that either. Like always getting more things for your bag of tricks. Um, so I do a lot of helping teachers come up with like a behavior contract. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes, and actually like guiding them through like, so what is the problem? Like what's the root of this? What what behavior are we trying to focus on? Because there's some kids where we're like, well, it's just everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if we can, you know, take it down to one or two, maybe three, like really behaviors we want to work on specifically and just, you know, do as much positive reinforcement when we see it and have something working for it. Um, I think getting parents involved is so important mm -hmm. so that, you know, if we have this contract, I've been working with a lot of first graders lately mm -hmm. and trying to help them, you know, they're just getting happy faces four times a day, but then going and showing their parents, like, you have four happy faces and hopefully yeah. it's rewarded at home too, because often parents can offer a reward that we can't offer Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. That might be even more meaningful. So it's nice to have that home to family connection. Absolutely, yeah, that's definitely important. Something that I've been learning a lot about is making sure that the parents are also involved in what's going on at school so that way they can reinforce the things that we're working on right. and then they can also build on that in school and never, it's just kind of a good right. Right, effort. And it's uh, great to be in communication too because you know you don't want something building, 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 building here at school right. and then you talk to the parents much later and they're like, well, yeah. We didn't know this was going on, right? Exactly. <laughs> Usually if we can get them on our team sooner than later, yeah. it's going to help too. Now, how do you handle parents that aren't as receptive to, you know, things that we're trying to implement at school? Yeah, and that's oftentimes one of the most challenging yeah. pieces because um, there's all different parenting styles and, you know, some may not agree with what we're doing. Um, what I try to put forth, though, is like, we want what's best for your kid. Like, right. we want your child to be successful. Like this is something that's tried and we believe is going to be successful. Like we'd love your support on it, but you know, and just kind of showing that. Yeah. And usually, when parents know that you truly do care about their child, they're more likely to get to come on board. Absolutely. I mean, I'm trying to think right now. I've definitely dealt with difficult parents, but I can't think of a time where they weren't on board of trying to help, like with a problem situation they eventually come around yeah. once you kind of talk about like the, exactly. what's happening and right that's good and like what's gonna happen if it continues this way and, right. right right because everyone wants your child to succeed absolutely right. um, and lastly how do you continue to grow professionally um, so I you know I love to learn new things like I just said with PLCs like I love learning from our newer teachers yeah. who are just straight out of their credential program who have things that maybe I didn't know about mm -hmm. Um, I have a lot of extra duties at school because I like to, like I'm very into literacy, so I, I attend a lot of, actually just last night I was at a, a development, professional development mm -hmm. for literacy, um, and I love that, just seeing all the new, like changing things, so I, I try to do, you know, as many things to keep up, um, especially now that I'm not in the classroom, like yeah. I never want to touch, lose touch of what the classroom is like, because I feel like if I can relate to the teachers and give them those experiences and you know show them that I know this too yeah and, you know I think that helps 
with both the students and the staff that just have a better connection. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking your time of today course. and allowing me to interview. Asking these great questions <laughs> was really thoughtful. Thank yes. you. All right. Thank you. <laughs>